You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcast on volunteering in the EU. Few social activities can be as rewarding as volunteering. It makes you feel part of society. It helps you find friends, learn new skills and even advance your career. This is why more and more Europeans want to do it. But how is it regulated and what are the challenges to cross-border volunteering? Stay with us. Lending a hand at your local sports club, helping out an elderly member of your community or picking up litter in the forest or on the beach? If this sounds familiar, you may be one of the 92 to 94 million adults in the EU who are involved in volunteering. Charity, humanitarian and development aid, education and sport are the main volunteering sectors in Europe, followed by arts, music and culture. With busy lives, it can be hard to find time to volunteer. And yet the number of active volunteers has actually increased over the past 10 years, albeit at a different pace across countries in the EU. Indeed. And this is because while some countries have long-standing volunteering traditions, in others, the voluntary sector is still poorly developed or is yet to emerge. According to a recent Eurobarometer poll, the highest proportions of young volunteers are found in Slovenia, Denmark, Ireland and the Netherlands. But only about one in six young Polish, Greeks and Hungarians say they have had such an experience. Most of these activities take place at the local community level. In fact, according to the same poll, only 7% volunteer in another EU country and 11% in other parts of the world. So why are so few willing to venture beyond their national borders? Let's take a look at the barriers that discourage them. According to a study commissioned by the European Parliament, barriers to cross-border volunteering are mainly linked to the lack of legal recognition and diversity in recruitment and the lack of appropriate training for cross-border volunteers. They cost the EU around 65 million euros per year, so it's definitely something to be looked at. To unleash the full potential of cross-border volunteering, the European Parliament is pushing for uniform standards across the EU, for instance through the creation of a European statute, to ensure that volunteer organisations are duly recognised. Aware of the importance of the skills and knowledge gained through volunteering, MEPs have also proposed the creation of a skills passport. Members have also repeatedly called for more funding, the removal of technical barriers and the creation of a European Volunteer Centre Development Fund. Today, EU-funded schemes such as the EU Aid Volunteers Programme and the European Voluntary Service channel most cross-border volunteers in Europe. Thanks to the latter, about 100,000 European youngsters have been able to participate in international volunteering over the last 20 years. The scheme is open to all young people aged 17 to 30 and willing to spend between 2 to 12 months volunteering in another EU country or elsewhere in the world. There's no salary, but expenses are covered and there's a certificate attesting to their experience. For youngsters willing to lend a helping hand in humanitarian projects and disaster-struck communities for up to 18 months, the EU Aid Volunteers provides the ideal platform. For those really thinking global, the United Nations Volunteers Programme is active in around 130 countries and mobilises close to 8,000 people every year. And the International Red Cross and Red Crescent count more than 17 million active volunteers. So it's not the lack of opportunities which prevents more European youngsters from volunteering in other countries. But will the EU's efforts to increase legal and institutional recognition of volunteering manage to drive up the numbers? We certainly hope so. And at next week's plenary session, members will ask the Commission to reveal how it plans to encourage more Europeans to volunteer. You're listening to the European Parliamentary Research Service podcasts.